Hi there. Um, I'd like to show you how to make a force meter. It's a, a device for measuring force. Uh, you can buy them from science suppliers. Um, some of them are quite cheap. But I always think it's much, much more interesting to make your own. And by making it, you certainly understand how it works. Um, another reason for making your own force meter, it helps to get your head around the thorny subject of force and weight and mass. Um, I'm not sure uh, at what age you begin to grapple this subject in primary school. Certainly um, we, we start to get our heads around it in secondary schools. Um, and the problem is that it's kind of everyday language bumping up against scientific language. Um, in everyday language we call these sort of things weights. Uh, this is a 100 gram weight. But uh, in science we say, and we're quite right in science, that um, weight is a force. It's to do with the Earth's gravity. And it's not measured in grams or kilograms. Weight is a force and forces are measured in a unit called the Newton. Now uh, we don't really come across Newtons very often in uh, everyday life and I think that's why the, 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 there is a problem uh, d uh, d dealing with this subject. Um, this, ma this mass, a scientist would say this is a mass uh, it's a 100 gram mass. Um, if I took this to um, the moon, it would only weigh one sixth of that. So um, you must, it, it, a Newton must be used as a unit of force. Um, uh, kilograms and grams are the unit of mass. Mass never changes no matter where it is, whether it's on the earth or the moon. It's still a 100 gram mass. But um, the weight does change. So that's why we use Newton for forces. Well, um, enough of the science. Um, let's get busy making a force meter. Um, we need um, some black uh, plastic tubing. This is an electrical conduit. Um, it's, it's quite cheap. Three, three meters will only cost you a few pounds. So this piece would only cost a few pence. And you can buy electrical conduit from your local uh, DIY superstore. Uh, we also need um, a cup hook and a curtain eye. These are all available from DIY shops. Um, we could, it would be nice to have a piece of wooden dowel that fits inside there. I don't have any at hand. So I'm going to use a piece of uh, square section wood that's available from my supply service. This is 8mm by 8mm square section wood. And both the tubing and the dowel are about 24cm long doesn't have to be exactly 24 centimetres. Um, we're also going to need um, some masses, let's use the right word. These are 100 gram masses and uh, I've also got a hanger here. This also uh, has a mass of 100 grams so altogether we've got uh, 400 grams there. Um, most primary schools would have some of these lying around. If you don't you could um, perhaps borrow them from your local secondary school. Um, now we do have to drill um, two holes across the end of the piece of tubing. Um, you see I've drilled a hole through there and that hole is about four millimeters diameter. Okay, The first thing we're going to do is we need to um, make two small holes at each end of the wood to help us to screw the curtain eye and the cup hook in. You could use an awl, I've made my own awls by sharpening a screwdriver. Um, or you could uh, hammer in uh, a nail, just a short way, like this. Don't hammer it in too far, just to make a small hole, just to help us get the, the curtain eye and the cup hook started. Don't go in too far, otherwise the wood will split. And then screw the curtain eye in. Doesn't need to go all the way down, just a short way in, as long as it feels so firm and secure and then the cup hook on the other end and again don't need to screw it all the way down as long as it feels as though it's firmly in. Next we're going to fix the spring onto the curtain eye and they've got this loop of metal here this uh, is an expendable spring which is available from my supplier service they're only 10p each and it's a bit like putting keys on a key ring uh, once you get the knack of doing it, you need to push it between the two bits of wire. 
which I'm failing to do at the moment, there we are, and take it round to where the, the metal starts, which is there, and then keep moving it around until it's on like this. So can, can you see that now? It's on the curtain eye. We now thread it through, we've got the hole at this end, and we pass it up the plastic pipe, until it pokes out the other end, there we are. Then move it back a little bit so that we can put the piece of 4mm dowel through the holes and through the loop. I don't know if, can you see that there? It's going through the loop. And hopefully this is going to be a nice fit. I don't need to use glue, that feels really tight. If you can't push it through, then you could just tap it through with a hammer. Okay, so we've now got our force meter working now. So the next thing to do is to calibrate it. We need to mark off uh, newtons. So with nothing hanging on the force meter at all, uh, we're going to mark zero there. So I'm just going to push it against the uh, tubing to stop it moving. And now we can mark across there and write a zero. I'm actually going to write newtons on here as well, why not? Newtons. There we are. Now we're going to hang uh, 100 gram mass on the end. This hanger weighs 100 grams. And the force acting on 100 grams is 1 Newton. So again, I'm going to just, when it settles down, lock it off with my finger. I don't know if you can see that. And then mark across and write 1. We're now going to put um, another mass on here and hang that. Again, lock it off when it stopped moving, mark it and write two. You could have, of course, put half as well, half a newton, one and a half newtons. Put another 100 gram mass on. So we've now got 300 grams. When it stopped moving, push it against the tubing with your finger. Just make sure you can see this. I'm just going to mark that and write free there. And then finally, put the 400 grams of masses. There we go. I'll just move this so you can see. When it stops moving, push it against the tubing to lock it off. Mark it. And like four. Don't be tempted to uh, uh, go for a five, a, a fifth uh, mass because that will overextend the spring and it won't return to zero. So that's our finished force meter, uh, naught to four newtons, and we can use this to do um, lots of science experiments. Um, I'd perhaps link this with a topic on the Egyptians. How on earth did they move around those huge? slabs of stone uh, without any machinery. Uh, we can use our force meter to drag a block and see what force is there. Oh, that's beginning to move at just over half a newton. It's overcoming the friction there. We load that up with another block and let's see, let's drag it. Not half a newton, one newton, one and a half newtons, two newton, two newtons and it starts to move. So a force of two newtons will drag two boxes along. It's three blocks. One newton, two newtons, three newtons, three and a half. Ah, oh, and then it begins to move. Three and a half newtons. And you could ask pupils, how could we move um, those blocks um, using a smaller force? How could we reduce the friction? Perhaps we could put some rollers, some pieces of dowel under here. Perhaps that's what the um, Egyptians did. So I think there's lots of potential here uh, for using your force meter. So um, I, hope, I hope I've inspired you to have a go at making um, a force meter.